Welcome to Fullness of Grace. Hi, this is Jenny Cochran, and I'm here with Father Quan Tran. And today we're here to talk about the topic of adoration. And adoration is a very important topic, and I know that we've had a lot of demand to speak about adoration. But what exactly is adoration? Well, St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that it's something that we owe to God because the, the fact that he is God, mm -hmm. because we're not in a, um, an equal relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So this is right worship. This is something we owe to God because of his divinity, because he created us. So, um, and even the catechism uh, speaks a little bit about this. Um, number 14, 18 says, because Christ himself is present in the sacrament of the altar, he is to be honored with the worship of adoration. To visit the Blessed Sacrament is a proof of gratitude, an expression of love, and a duty of adoration toward Christ our Lord. So it, it, is, a, it is duty, mm -hmm. and it's, and it's um, a way for us to express our gratitude, our faith, and, and our love. Um, but, but we should go back to faith, because that's, that's a problem. Um, mm -hmm. As you know, so many Catholics really don't believe in the real presence of the Blessed Sacrament. Mm -hmm. And so... And so they, don't, they ignore the Blessed Sacrament in the tabernacle, in adoration. Um, so faith is, is truly um, essential for us to, to believe and, and to, to go to Jesus, to be with him and to adore him. Because he's truly present, you know, body, blood, soul, and divinity in, in the, the host, in the Blessed Sacrament. I remember reading um, the early church fathers and throughout the whole history of the church, everyone has believed in the true presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. It's been a foundation for our, our, the entire history of the Catholic Church, really. And, um, and then I was reading in um, this Fatima and Lucio's own words about Our Lady of Fatima. And when the angel appeared to um, Lucia and to the children there, I mean, they really emphasized just how the world is so indifferent to Jesus in the tabernacle. So the angel gave them this prayer, Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I adore you profoundly, and I offer you the most precious body, blood, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ, present in all the tabernacles of the world, in reparation for the outrages, sacrileges, and indifference with which he himself is offended. So Jesus is offended by our indifference. And so adoration is a way to uh, make reparation for that. Right. I mean, Jesus instituted the Eucharist for three main reasons. Uh -huh. One is to perpetuate the sacrifice of the Mass, mm -hmm. uh, the, the holy sacrifice, to, to make it present to us uh, because it is uh, salvific. And another reason is to give us food for the journey, to, to strengthen us, to... Um, to give us the grace to, to be holy and to persevere until we make it to heaven. Mm -hmm. And then the third reason is to be with us in a real, tangible, true way. He knows that we're weak. He knows that it's difficult to, for us to acknowledge and, and to think of his presence. And so he helps us to, to, to be with us in, in a way that's tangible and, that, and that's visible um, in, the, in the house of the Blessed Sacrament. Um, and, and like you say, so many people don't adore, don't believe. And so uh, he's looking for people like you and me and hopefully people in our audience to, 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 spend, to come to spend time with him, um, to believe in him, and to, in a way, make up for, for those who, who do not believe. Yeah. Okay, so um, what does one do during adoration? Good question. That's what uh -huh. I get a lot, right? Uh -huh. Because people, they don't know exactly what to do during adoration. What Jesus tells us um, in, in this book called Insinu Jesu, uh, which he speaks to a Benedictine monk and he gives us, he speaks ab about Eucharistic adoration. And he, one thing is to, is first of all, is to be present, is mm -hmm. to be present, is to come to Jesus with faith that this is him and to be present to him. And um, um, this, is, this can be difficult for us because we, it's hard for us to be present. We're usually distracted, mm -hmm. and it's okay. When, when we come to Jesus, know that he's there, and we can share with him whatever is on our mind and in our heart, right? To, to share with him um, like we share with a close friend, mm -hmm. you know? And, and once we realize that we are distracted, we can bring our attention back to Jesus, mm -hmm. knowing that he's there, 
that he's loving us, that he's present to us. So try to be present to him. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, to keep him company and, and, and to be with him. And another, another thing that we do during adoration is love. Mm-hmm. First of all, is to receive his love because he's truly present to us. He's loving us. Mm-hmm. And so he wants us to receive that love and to love him in return. Um, to, to, to share this love, just like any close relationship, friendship or husband and wife, or um, sometimes you just want to just to be with the, the person that you love, mm-hmm. to be present and, and, and to love that person that way. And then also we can, like I mentioned already, we can share with them our thoughts, our worries, our occupations. Um, Jesus mentioned in the book here, he said, come to me with your questions, your perplexities, your needs. Nothing is too small for me, and nothing is too great. I am here for you. I wait for you to share with me all that occupies you and all the questions that arise in your heart. Worrying and daydreaming are useless. What I ask of you is dialogue with me in the sacrament of my love and a boundless confidence in my loving friendship. That's what it is. It's about friendship. It's about dialogue, uh, sharing with him whatever concerns us, asking him questions, Mm -hmm. uh, whatever's uh, occupying us. And then, like in any conversation, in any friendship, we should listen as well. Listen in the the silence of our hearts. And this is difficult for us because we're not used to silence. But but with practice, we we can can listen to Jesus. Just like St. John, St. John the Beloved Apostle, Mm -hmm. who rested his head on the heart of Jesus. Mm -hmm. right? Just listening to him, just being with him. And we can do that. And sometimes we can even say, Lord, speak for your servant is listening. Mm-hmm. Or Jesus, do you have anything to say to me? Or we can ask him, uh, what should I do about this problem? And then just listen, just to be quiet. Mm-hmm. And then oftentimes he'll speak to our heart. He'll speak to our heart um, and, 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 we'll, and we'll know. And, and then that way we can grow in our un- union with, with Jesus. I, I like the idea. I, I once uh, heard this in a speech where... You imagine yourself in a, in a giant auditorium and Pope Francis is speaking or Mother Teresa when she was alive. And um, there's thousands of people in this, in this arena. And all of a sudden, Pope Francis or the speaker walks down the aisle and walks. And then what do you know? They come up right to you, to me, and want to talk with me. And I think about, sometimes I don't think we realize how big God is and that God wants to have that intimate conversation with us. He's come here to speak with us and um, it's an incredible honor really to be able to have that type of relationship with God. Right. Yeah. And so we don't want to be inattentive or distracted, uh-huh. right? Jesus yeah. re- is really there for us personally. Uh-huh. He, he, he wants to know what we're going through. He, he wants to have this friendship mm-hmm. with us, right? He says in the Bible, I no longer call you servants, but friends, mm-hmm. right? And so in any friendship, we need to spend time together. We need mm-hmm. to converse. We need to share. Uh-huh. Otherwise, the, the friendship will split or people will drift apart. Yeah. Right? So we need to treat Jesus like he said. I'm your friend. I want you to be my friend. And so spend time with him, um, speaking to him, listening to him. But then he's also the healer, right? Uh-huh. He's the healer of souls. And as you know, you know, we, we all have um, issues. We have problems. Um, we can come to Jesus. Um, just like we go to a doctor or a therapist, we can share with him our problems. We know that we're inadequate. We know that we're not sufficient. We know that we're broken and to share with him, pour out our heart to the Lord. Mm-hmm. That's what friends do. Uh-huh. Our close friends, they pour out their heart to each other. And that's what we can do. This is not a time to be formal. Uh-huh. This is a, a time to just be yourself, to be authentic, to be simple. You know, as St. Therese says, right, I always speak to God in, um, with whatever is on my heart. I don't worry about sentences or structure, and he always understands me. Mm-hmm. And that's what Jesus wants us to do, just to be simple, to be, to be intimate and to pour our heart out to the Lord, and then let him heal us. Mm -hmm. Let him do what he needs to do. A lot of times we're broken, either psychologically, emotionally, physically, uh, spiritually. Mm -hmm. We need healing. We're Mm -hmm. not whole. And there Jesus can heal us with his presence uh, and with his action. And, And allow Jesus to do that. A lot of times we don't even know where we need healing. Jesus knows 
more than us. Mm -hmm. Maybe our memory, maybe trauma, maybe a lack of faith, whatever. I mean, just go to Jesus, say, Jesus, you know what I need. I need healing. I need graces. I need love. Go ahead and do with me what you will. Yeah. I love the fact that that's so authentic because we are all broken. We all have wounds from our past that um, we've either received from others or that we have uh, done ourselves through sin. And um, I think that it opens our heart. We have to be open to receiving that healing and changing in a way, almost a conversion to receive this and be changed. Right. Yeah. And, and know that... And, and, know, and know that we are being changed, uh -huh. right? Just like, um, just like when we're out in the sun, uh -huh. uh, right? So, and so out in the sun, we, we get a, we, the, from the rays of the sun, we get a tan and we get vitamin D, mm -hmm. even though we don't feel it, mm -hmm. even though it's not perceptible. So similarly with Jesus, when we're in his presence, he is working. We are being changed, right? We are being healed inwardly and, and outwardly. Mm -hmm. And so know that, have faith, right? Um, that, 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 and, and allow him um, to, to, to heal us. And then lastly, we, and lastly, we have the freedom to uh -huh. kind of kind of do whatever we, we want, really, uh -huh. right? Because a lot of times people will bring in a book mm -hmm. to do spiritual reading. That's perfectly fine, as long as we're not so caught up in it that we we're, that we forget that mm -hmm. Jesus is present to us, uh -huh. and we can ask Jesus to enlighten us. So as we read, what it is that what is it that you want me to know? What it mm -hmm. is that you want to um, to bring to my attention? We can do Lexio Divina, read scripture, um, and, and then that's what I, all, I do a lot in the presence of the Blessed Sacrament is, is I prepare for my homilies, mm -hmm. and I ask Jesus to enlighten me as to what it is that he wants me to know and to help me. Um, we can pray the rosary, right? We can just, um, we can just rest. Sometimes mm -hmm. we're just so tired, and mm -hmm. then we just want to just rest in his presence, and that's okay. You know, um, sometimes when we're sleepy, it's okay. Just be yourself. Go there, be with your friend, and um, yeah. Yeah, I still think one of the hardest challenges is silence. That there's just, it's such a loud, noisy world, and we're so used to being surrounded by noise in the car or in our homes. And um, to just rest in the Lord, like you said, is, is a challenge for us to um, just be silent. Right? Yeah. I mean, Jesus said that, right? Those who are weary and find life, find life burdensome, come to me and I will give you rest. Yeah. Right? And, um, and it takes practice. You know, people who are not used to adoration, they are uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. they, they don't know what to do. They're agitated and, um, and, and uneasy. But it takes practice. The more we, we go to adoration, the more we practice solitude and, and silence, and that the more we... we, we we're comfortable with it. I wonder if it's like training that people should start with maybe a few minutes and then try and add a little more time each month or something like that. Right, absolutely. Yeah, it's always good to just start. Yeah. To just start. Um, sometimes we can think about something or plan something. It's good just to go, just do it. Uh -huh. Right? And, um, and it's so convenient for us. We're so spoiled here. There's always a Catholic church nearby. Mm -hmm. um, so we can just, just go find a Catholic church, find a Blessed Sacrament Chapel, and just go and spend time with Jesus. And the more we do that, the more um, we will be comfortable with it. Yeah. So what happens during adoration? So there are many things that happen during adoration. I, I touched on some of it already, but one, one is healing, mm -hmm. right? We, we need healing, either from our sins or from our psychological wounds or, or whatever. So come to Jesus, let him heal us. And um, another thing that happens during adoration is, is our, our conformity to Jesus, mm -hmm. right? Being in his presence, we are being made holy. We mm -hmm. are being sanctified. And so the more we spend time with Jesus, the more we become like him. Mm -hmm. And so know that, uh, know, know that, know that, that that is happening. And also we grow in our union with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Like in any relationship, when, the more we spend time with somebody, the, gross, the, grow, the closer we, we, we grow to them. Um, the, the, we grow in intimacy and knowledge and love and union and, and friendship. Um, I also mentioned being enlightened. Mm -hmm. You know, if we have questions, if we have problems, we can go to Jesus and mm -hmm. ask him, Jesus, what, what should I do? And he'll answer us uh, in, in one form or another, and, and then we'll know. Um, 
I wonder, too, if this isn't a foretaste of our life in heaven. You know what I mean? Gazing upon the face of our Lord. If that's, isn't that what we're going to be doing in heaven? Exactly. This you know? is the closest we get to heaven, uh -huh. is, is being in the presence of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. Yeah. Right? Just gazing, being in His presence, uh, praising Him, thanking Him, loving Him. Um, Adoring right? Him, yeah. Right? Uh -huh. Adoring Him, just like the angels and the saints. Uh-huh, yeah. Right. So we want to practice for that. Yes, yes. <laughs> Definitely. We, just, we can start heaven mm -hmm. now. So how much time do you recommend for adoration? So as much as possible, uh -huh. right? really as much as possible. Um, we can start slow, but we can build up on that. You know, as a priest, I, I, I do at least an hour every day, mm -hmm. sometimes two, sometimes three hours, just being, being in the presence of Jesus. I'm spoiled because we have a Blessed Sacrament Chapel in our rectory. Uh -huh. So that's where I go first thing in the morning just to spend time with Jesus, to pray, just to be with Him. That's where I do my spiritual reading, prepare my homilies. Um, but for the average layperson, just, just try to go. And here's the thing with Jesus is that he makes time for us. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we think, you know, we can't, we don't have time. You know, we work eight hours a day. We have family. We have responsibilities. No, just try to make time. Either early in the morning, right? Get up earlier. There, there should be a, a place of um, perpetual adoration near where you are or, or, or a church that's open. Just go and, and spend time with Jesus. So this is the thing with Jesus. If we try to make the time, he'll kind of increase the time for us, mm -hmm. right? So if we just try to go either early in the morning, at lunchtime, or in the evening, and just spend a little time with Jesus, mm -hmm. maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then everything will work out, right? Mm -hmm. Jesus said, right, focus, think first about the kingdom of God and his glory and his justice, and everything else will be provided for you. Uh -huh. And... Uh, so sometimes we think we're too busy with work and, and family and responsibilities. But if we just try to go spend time with Jesus, everything else will take care of itself. That's a phrase that I use myself all the time. I say, if I put God first, then everything else is going to work out. Yeah, you have the time for everything you need to accomplish. You think about and God is outside of time. So... Um, yeah, just put, put the Lord first. Right. Yeah. I mean, Jesus even said here, um, nothing in your life is more important than the time you spend in adoration before my Eucharistic face. Nothing in your life, regardless of who you are, is more important than spending time with me in the Blessed Sacrament. And it's true, right? Everything we do is just temporary. Mm -hmm. But spending time with Jesus is eternal. Mm -hmm. right? It changes us. It changes the world. Um, and so... Make, make the time, and he'll give you extra time to take care of everything else. Mm -hmm. Everything will fall into place. Yeah. So what are some of the effects of um, adoration? So in, in, in some places where they have adoration, yeah, we have increased vocations. Uh -huh. um, the church is on fire. Uh -huh. Churches where have um, perpetual adoration or, or uh, adoration often, usually the people are, are on fire mm -hmm. for, the, for, for faith. And there's, there's vocations. And then know that the effects of the um, adoration go beyond the confines, uh -huh. the structure of the church or the Blessed Sacrament. Even neighborhoods where there is perpetual adoration mm -hmm. is influenced. There's more peace. There's less crime. There's more holiness. Um, there's less sin, right? And it, it, it goes beyond the, the, the boundaries. Um, so, so know that the, the, per, the effects of Eucharistic adoration is pervasive, it's, it's deep it's, and, and it's enduring. And, it, it, and, it, and it's just not for the present moment, too, but it, it, it affects the future. It affects what happened in the past, right? And during Eucharistic adoration, we can pray for ourselves and for others. That's another thing we can do. Um, offer up um, other people in our lives and know that Jesus blesses them and that he, he loves them and that, and that he'll take care of them. And then sometimes we don't have to be too specific either. You know, we can say, Jesus, so-and-so needs your help. And know that in his wisdom and goodness, he will help them. Mm -hmm. right? And Jesus said this, right? Eucharistic adoration is the, probably the most powerful way for us to intercede for others, mm -hmm. right? to raise them up before Jesus. Yeah, that's beautiful. Um, 
Okay, is there anything else you wanted to share on Eucharistic adoration? Sure, just, just maybe one last quote. That, you know, that Jesus, like you said before, it's amazing that God makes himself available to us. He comes mm -hmm. to us and he wants our friendship. He wants mm -hmm. our attention. He wants our, our, our time. And so this is what he said to the monk. Um, he says, I yearn for, your, for the gift of your love in response to my love and for your presence to my sacramental presence. How long must I beg you for your time, your love, and your companionship? I am here for you. Be here for me. Allow me to fill you even as you empty yourself before me. I am all yours. Be all mine. Prefer nothing whatsoever to my Eucharistic love. Come before me, giving thanks. So I know it's kind of incomprehensible, but it's true. That's why mm -hmm. Jesus made himself available to us mm -hmm. um, so that he can be with us. And he, he wants our friendship our time, and so try to, try to make time and to be with Jesus. I always find it amazing to think about the fact that, you know, Jesus walked this earth physically, you know, 2,000 years ago, and yet through the Eucharist, each person throughout all time will be able to touch him and receive him and adore him because of the Eucharist. And uh, it's really um, hard to comprehend, you know, but it's so beautiful because we can't say that, oh, that just happened then. That was something that happened yesterday. No, it's happening now. Jesus is here now, physically present for us in the Eucharist. Right, right. So, um, yeah, imagine if, you know, we lived 2,000 years ago mm -hmm. when Jesus was walking on the face of the earth. And, and we knew that Jesus was present. Wouldn't we want to go out of our way to just to be with him, yeah. to touch him, to see him, uh -huh. to hear him? But likewise, it's the same Jesus now. Right. All right, but in, in, a, in a different way. So this requires faith, but, but, but it's, in the way it's the same. And so Jesus, because he didn't want to leave us alone, because he didn't want to abandon us, because he wanted so much to be with us uh, in a tangible and real way, um, so that's why he... Um, that's why he's present to us in the Blessed Sacrament. And so let us take advantage of this love, this gift. Yeah. Um, never take it for granted um, and, and, and to be with him um, and in a way to make up for others who take it for granted. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think this has been very helpful and I hope this inspires you to spend more time in adoration. And um, uh, until next time, this is Jenny Cochran with Father Quantran in fullness of grace. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.